Hi, it's Joe from Minerva. Today we're going to do a really small tutorial on how to get the best finish on a boat neckline. Often a boat neckline will not have a binding on it because you've got this V shape here. You can't get a binding to sit flat. So there's a different shaped piece of pattern. The pattern that I've chosen to show you is the Maven Somerset Tea. It's an absolutely beautifully packaged pattern. It's got four different views, um, a, a small cuff, a large cuff, long sleeve and a three quarter sleeve. And what's different about this pattern is you get the pattern sheets and the booklet that comes with it is a real how-to of sewing stretch. So you'll get lots of information inside on how to shear your sleeves, which stitches to use for stretch and lots of detail on how to make the boat neck. Let's go over to the cutting table and the ironing board and I'll show you how to prepare the boat neck. I've used a decorative stitch today um, which I'll show you a little bit closer to give a different finish and I've got the same finish around the hem. First of all you need the neckline to be really nice and flat so give it a press. If you've got some viscose in your fabric make sure you're pressing and not dragging your fabric out of shape. Just give it a little steam too. And now, because the fabric's quite unstable, because it can move around, I'm just going to pin the shoulders to the ironing board. Steam to my ironing board. And we're going to move these facings. They don't look like facings, like traditional. It's like a grown-on facing. So we're going to move that facing and pin it so that it lines up with the shoulder seam. And you see it starting to stretch a little bit in the centre front. And we're going to pin it in the centre front as well. press. It's good to have glass head pins here because then if you touch them with the iron you don't melt them. Press rather than drag otherwise you'll drag it out of shape. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the outer edge of the fabric to stretch out more than the folded edge. and pin it in place. If you've got an overlocker, you can overlock this edge. It's just, it doesn't give it so much stretch then. So we're going to sew this with quite a wide seam. You do the same on the front and back. To finish the neckline, you can either overlock the edge before you press it down, but I know this um, isn't going to fray and I don't want any more bulk around quite a sort of delicate jersey, so I'm not going to finish that edge off. I'm now going to either, you've got a choice, you can twin needle sew so that you take two layers so you'll need to measure quite accurately or you could try a decorative stitch. So I'm going to try a decorative stitch on my machine. It doesn't need to stretch because it's a boat neck. I've got lots of space to get it over our head. And I'm going to try a decorative stitch around my neckline. I've had a little look at my decorative stitches and I've picked this one here, which is quite wide and I've tried it on some fabric.
It's a lovely decorative edge without having to put a neckband on. It's folded down once, it's not fraying. I've just trimmed off the excess. It's made a really flat neck. To finish off a boat neck, because you've got that nice V shape now, you need to press the shoulder out so that that neck band is really nice and flat. If you've used a stabiliser or a piece of tape in the shoulder, fold the seam allowances over the top of the tape so that you can cover up any of that tape that might scratch or irritate your shoulder and then top stitch from the right side and you need to make sure that that goes to the back. So this is the front, this is the back. So I'm pushing the seam allowance to the back. You get this um, shape neck on the Tilly and the Buttons Coco and the Somerset pattern that I've shown you today. And I hope that those few little tips will just help you to get a really smooth neckline. Do come again soon for more fitting and sewing tips and tutorials and techniques. See you again soon. Thank you.